Welcome to Jay Parkilla YouTube channel. It's my honor to have a first guest of the show. Uh, we haven't had a guest before, so it's a great uh, great to have a special guest. Uh, this man next to me is a is a uh, husband. Uh, he's a father of three boys, one girl. Am I right? Yes. Great human being. Every time see him smiling, and and when I visit to. Denver, Colorado, he's always asking, how are you? How is the family and everything? So really super and kind person. I, I don't have any bad words, only great words of Chris. So it's my honor to introduce the new Stanley Cup winner and uh, general manager of Colorado Avalanche, Chris, Chris McFarland. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. I will try this. Yeah. Kitos. Kitos. Eta otit. Menut Mukayan. Oh, great. Great job. <laughs> Let's start. You are prepared. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. That's really great. Uh, I have to ask first, uh, are you getting used to being named as a Stanley Cup winner and general manager of, of Avalanche? Wow. That's a, that's a crazy, even hearing it, it's still, it's still crazy to me. I, I think it's been a dream for a long time. Bo mm. Both of those things, but... Um, the Stanley Cup being the one that that's what we all dream dream about, right? Everybody has dreamed about. So when that on the night of the twenty sixth of June, when when we see the clock go down and 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 our guys, our players got it done, and our coaches got it done, it's just the emotion that you feel and the the joy and 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 seeing the joy in everybody's faces is yeah is incredible and something that you know we'll keep inside of us forever yeah and and then you know two weeks later the you know for joe sakic to you know appoint me gm and he'll stay on as uh, obviously the president and and the face of the the avalanche was just another cherry on top the sunday i guess but it, it's been uh, uh an unreal last few months that's for sure yeah for sure uh, now we are in Tampere, Finland, my home city and the place where we're going to, well, not me, but you are going to play the Global Series games against Columbus Blue Jackets. And um, uh, you arrived to Helsinki, which is capital of, of Finland, on Monday. Spent a few days there. How was the first few days in Finland? It was it was great. The, we stayed at the Hotel Comp. Yeah, come. Yeah, very yeah. Ni very nice hotel right in the, basically, I, I believe, in the city center. Yeah. Um, you know, so our guys got to have one practice there and, and enjoy Helsinki for for a few days. I went to the uh, IFK game on yeah. Tuesday night. It was one of my questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to how, how was the Finnish game? It was good. It was it was a defensive battle. Um, it was three. I think it was three two. If I remember, I, I think it's four two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. IFK yeah. against Yup. Yeah. Yes, yeah. against Yup, and. Uh, yeah. It, it was fun. It's always fun to, when you're in new countries to see the hockey, to see mm -hmm. the fans, to see the uh, some new some new players, um, maybe for the draft or free agents yeah. or Never or know. whatever. And it was you know, it was a, just a gave me something something to do as well on a on the Tuesday night, which was great to go see a hockey game. We walked yeah. right to the arena there and back. It was it was unreal. And then we had a day off Wednesday and. And took a great train here this morning. Yeah, and I heard that you you have tried some Finnish food like reindeer and fish soups. And how yeah. was those? R really good. the yeah. The salmon soup was probably my favorite. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I ordered it uh, in the room service after. The, <laughs> okay, after you the wanted game. some more. <laughs> wanted some more after we had it uh, Monday night um, at the yeah. restaurant. We had a team deal, yeah. team dinner yeah. when we first landed. Yeah. So it has been good. Good. Uh, I want to talk first about a little bit your background. Where did you came from? Because that is, of course, not just interesting for me, but Finnish people as well. So I noticed that you have been born in, in New York City, Bronx, 1970. So here in Finland, we usually see Bronx and, and New York from movies or TV series. Yeah. So I have to ask what kind of life it was in 70s and 80s living in the Bronx, New York. Yeah. I, 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 I want to I want to hear a few words. Well, the, I was the the Bronx was a sort of a uh, I don't know if this is the same word suburb. Yeah, yeah. Of 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 New York. 
uh, Manhattan, as everybody would know, New York City. Yeah. Uh, but I moved to where I grew up, which was about 35 miles okay. further um, okay. when I was a little, yeah. uh, probably three or four or five. Yeah. So I, I grew up just south of what, what I think everyone would probably know is West Point. Mm -hmm. uh one of the you know the u.s military academies yep. so which is a, a really nice area um about the great one of the great things about it was it's a small quiet community a lot of the people worked in the city yeah. um but i had so many things close right we had the rangers were close 30 miles from me the yeah. devils were new jersey devils were close and the islanders were a little bit further so we had three big hockey teams all you know accessible yeah for me when i was there and i i grew it was a, a typical quiet okay suburb place and just great place to grow up yeah good good to hear and uh i noticed from 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 background check that you played some hockey in pace university in new york yeah so what was the hockey it, college hockey in 90s it wasn't it wasn't high level hockey and and in, in terms of Division one or Division yeah. two or anything yeah. like that, but for for me it was something I loved to do and and to be part of the team sport. I grew up playing all the all the sports. Um, I knew I wasn't any good, mm -hmm. um, but I loved to play right. yeah. and I knew I wanted to get into the locker room and everything. All and that, yeah. yep. Yeah. And I knew I wanted to make a, a career mm -hmm. in hockey and and scouting was the area that most intrigued me in building teams and um you know figuring out why sim teams were successful and others weren't and and that sort of started me on my Not my bad. journey to try and to figure out how to get my foot in the door with a team and it it took me probably nine or ten years before i got a chance with the the columbus blue jackets yeah yeah crazy enough um yeah before i go there yeah, i have to yeah. ask if it During those days when you were yeah. playing, if then there would have been a scout in the arena yeah. watching Chris McFarland playing hockey yeah. and making some notes in their book, yeah. what would have been yeah. the strengths of Chris McFarland That's in good. that book? That's a good question. And I, I joke with UC, our goalie coach, that I would score on him all, oh, really? all the time. But <laughs> it, 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 I, was, I think I was a hard-working, checking type player okay. with that kid that could chip in around the net and, and pay a price to score some goals, but uh, be trustworthy and be most importantly, be a good teammate. Yeah. I did not have high end skill or, or, or what great skating ability or anything like that, but I, I love to play and, and, uh, and, and we played on back then it was more easier for us to play on, on rollerblades. Yeah. Because yeah. there wasn't a lot of rinks around where we grew That's up. True. So yeah. we, we grew up playing on, on rollerblades and then you know we transitioned to ice a little bit and um but yeah i was uh probably a, a, just a checking wing checking forward yeah, yeah that's good yeah and i noticed that uh you got your bachelor's degree in 92 later on graduated from law school in 98 yeah so i have to ask a guy having a bachelor degree and and, and uh getting through the law school How did you end up on 93 and on, on ice hockey? Because I found that you you were you started your job as a New York is mm -hmm. it a Ranger or Islanders or was it what was the task then? I was the first my first sort of ice chance hockey. to work with hockey was with the with the league itself. Okay, it was a league. That the was something I yeah, didn't find out. The okay. NHL office, which is has an office in New York, New York. City. Yeah. Um, so I was finishing up the undergraduate degree that you talked about and then went right into the law, law program yeah. at the same school. Yeah. So I just transitioned to one from the other end. And the great part about that is I, I did my first year full time, just law school, no work. And then after the, the last few years I did, um, my work during the day, law school at night, and then I could scout games on my own on, time. on the weekends. And how did you manage to get there with working with the NHL? Yeah, it, it was a it was an internship. Okay. That I uh, I don't remember the particulars of, of how it came to be. Probably back then we wrote letters, right? Yeah. Um, and put a stamp on it and yeah. sent it in the mailbox. And 
Yeah. And sometimes you get a call and sometimes, sometimes you don't, yeah. right? And and uh, I wanted to work. I knew I wanted to work for a team in scouting, but I knew it wouldn't be easy. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, a, like I said, I wasn't a very good player. Yeah. I wasn't a, certainly a professional player. Yeah. But I knew I wanted to, to work for a team. I just didn't know how to do it. And, yeah. And one of the ways that I thought was to get my foot in the door with the league and that would help start me start get, from somewhere get yeah. into the yeah. get into the the local rinks cuz we had the devil like I said yeah, the yeah. devils islanders rangers some minor league teams and then I could start to maybe make some contacts and talk to people and and maybe someday that would help that's a good way to saying because in 1999 you joined the Columbus Blue Jackets how how did you get there how I think I think it was all those those little baby steps from Working Did they in, contact you, or were you contacting them? Or I was, but yeah, I think it was when I was going to law school. I asked to um, have coffee with GM of the Islanders, yeah. GM of the Devils, um, GM mm-hmm. of the Rangers, assistant GMs of those teams. And then when I was scouting, I would ask the scouts questions about you know how how they how they do their work, how they file their reports, and. I create my own and send it to the teams and yeah. ask for suggestions. And sometimes I ask for if you have five minutes for a phone call. And and one of one or two or three of them, you know, were really kind to me and and they stayed in touch with me. And then when I was finishing up law school, the Blue Jackets and the Minnesota Wild were coming into the league. Yeah. So some of my uh, people like Larry Plo. Um, Marshall Johnston, uh, those previous connections took a liking to me, I guess, and and they made some phone calls, and and that led to an introduction with the Blue Jackets, and and that's how I well got my foot in the door, so to speak. Wow! And from 2000 to 2007, you were director of hockey operation at Columbus Blue Jackets. For people who might not know, what kind of task is that? I think that my my initial start with the Blue Jackets was combining my hockey and law. So yeah. I was doing things like preparing our contracts, yeah. um, the collect the CBA, which is the collective bargaining agreement, which is the rules that have to be followed between the teams and the and the league and the players have to follow certain rules and, and things so i was i that i had as my task is learning that document and and then being able to apply those rules and then and then scouting as well i was able to do and then you know shortly after i started there they had the first uh you know work stoppage where we missed the whole year yeah. and then that brought in the salary cap Yeah, and that was a big piece for me. Yeah, because I was became the Blue Jackets guy yeah. to learn that, and yeah. and that was a really important part for my career. Yeah, and and from 2007, you were named at, named as a assistant general manager, and you were there at Columbus until 2015. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, eight years. So, and also the last two years, you were the GM for the AHL team, and. Uh, In a few words, what is the biggest difference between general manager and assistant manager? Is there a big difference, or yeah, yeah. I know you are working closely that's a good before question. before with Joe and some others, yeah. but is there a big difference? I, I think the biggest difference is I have to earn my stripes with the other GMs, yeah. right, and and learn. You know, the I have to make the calls or take the calls and yeah. and and be able to make final decisions on things. Yeah. You know, and and I don't mean. Just me, right? Like we'll use our staff, like we always do, and and get a lot of opinions and, and that sort of thing. But I, I think in terms of building relationships with the other GMs is probably the yeah, the piece the that thing. I have to do now. You know, lucky for me, a, a lot of those guys were uh, well, our friends, but a lot of them I grew up with. They were assistant GMs and yeah. and have that kind of. Um, friendship already and and knowledge of who we are and you know what we're about kind of thing so but I do think there is definitely uh, lots lots for me to learn in, in that yeah, new sure. role yeah and last two years of, of your time at Columbus you were assistant 
general manager for Jarmo Kekäläinen, who's the yep. Finnish, Finnish guy, and I'm sure that all the Finnish people who's watching this knows really well. So, how was it working with Finnish guy like Jarmo those two years? Yeah. Of course, it's a quite short time, but yeah, two years. Yeah, it, it, it was great. Yarm, I knew Jarmo uh, from obviously he was you know a, a big time amateur scout for the Blues for yeah. many years and and some other teams, but he, he, Yarma was a worker. Like he was a, a good scout who was in the arenas and, and working hard. And, and, uh, the few years that we were there, I learned a lot from Yarmo and, and he, he was very good to me and, and my family and including the, the process of transitioning to, to Colorado. So, um, got nothing but respect and, and lots of good, good memories of, of, of Yarmo and during our, our brief time together in Columbus. So 2015, you moved to Colorado to be the assistant general manager there as well. Was there a big reason for change? Was it just you were spending 15 years at Columbus, yeah. you wanted something to change? Or was there I, some certain task you were I, interested about it? Or Yeah, I, th- I think I think it was a few things. I think Yarmo, like Yarmo was, was bringing in some you know people for his staff, which I think is totally normal yeah and and my role was was going to change a little bit yeah and i think the colorado um situation was probably more of a a a fit in in the states we have a phrase you know you know round round hole Mm -hmm. round peg Mm -hmm. it fit nice yeah right and i think for me my strengths were salary cap yeah trades free agency pro scouting um that type of stuff, salary cap, you know, strategy. And I think that's what color exactly what Colorado was looking for. Yeah. And, and we had a great 15 or 16 years, whatever it was in Columbus, very grateful, learned something from everyone during those years, whether it was Doug McLean, Scott Housen and Yarmo, they all always treated me incredibly well. And, but I think it was uh, the right time for the right move. Yeah. And you came in the interesting time. Then Patty Crua was the head coach of Colorado, and and there's a lot of things we could talk about those seven years of time in in Colorado. But 2020, you were named as a general manager at Colorado Avalanche. What was the feeling, and and when you hear it first time, was it like a big dream came true? Has that always been? If you started your career in in back in the 90s, so was the dream always there? Like 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 people playing hockey, the dream is to maybe be an NHL player. Yeah. And you were telling a few minutes ago that you were always interesting about scouting and working with yeah. NHL teams. So had your goal always been the general manager or just working with that? Maybe not the goal, but the dream. Yeah, that was that would be the right way. I think yeah. the, the correct way to, to say it. it. You know, you don't... I never was, was in a rush or I even, you know, thought like someday I would be a GM. It was a sort of a dream and and like you said out here right yeah. and i wanted to to maybe you know work towards it and 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 see what could happen but you know i i can honestly say if if i would have been a, a pro scout or been paid to watch hockey games yeah. for 30 years so or been fine. assistant gm i i would have been very considered myself very very fortunate and and to have the you know um to get I wasn't in a rush either. I, you know, there were things I had to learn, right? Because I'm not, you know, like you said, a, a, a hall of famer or an icon or, um, you know, even a former player. Um, so I knew that I had to be ready yeah. and that would take time. And I, I had Get the lots, respect and everything. lots to yeah. learn. Yeah. And, and, and had to grind and, and be in rinks and, and I loved it, but I, there was, when I, if, if it ever would happen, I wanted to be as ready as possible and, and pay my dues and grind in the corners type of thing. Yeah, for sure. Now you have, you now you are the general manager and you have won the Stanley Cup. So what are the new goals? What are the new dreams yeah. for the future? Well, I think for us, it's, it's, we have a, we have a young core, mm-hmm. right? Whether when you start looking at our group, you have guys like, you know, we got Nathan signed to an mm-hmm. extension and, and Kale McCarr and Miko Rantanen and Lekanen and big, you know, Valerie Nichushkin and Devontae's and Landeskog. And, yeah. you know, 
it's it's I think what's exciting for for Joe, myself, our coaches and our fans is we're not I don't think we're a t- an aging team. No. You know, I think we we should still have some some good hockey in front of us. Mm-hmm. I think that the cap is going to be something that is probably our biggest challenge both this year and next year until hopefully it'll it'll start to to move north again yeah. and and then we could add around those players but i think the the goal is just to try and, and and give our group and as as be as competitive as possible you know for the foreseeable future and 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 being ready to make you know decisions that help move that move us along and hopefully stay stay competitive for four five six years and uh, joe now is the president of, president of hockey operations so what is the what is the meaning of that what is the difference between general manager and, and being president oh it's just watching like bigger overview or yeah, is there a certain so. task or i think so i think joe joe takes a um you know a big picture view of everything yeah. you know obviously we worked very close closely together since since day one when i started yeah. here and and i don't think that that will change i mean he's joe sackick i mean he's he, he's one of the best to ever do it yeah a giant of the game and um, won two cups so he knows about you know the challenges of trying to win a second one and, and now he's won a third one as you know last year with us and Um, so he, he's an unreal resource for for me and for every one of our our scouts and and everyone in our organization because you know let's face it that yeah. number 19 is in the rafters so yeah um, he's got a he's got a wealth of knowledge that we'll tap into on a lot of different areas yeah and usually everybody is seeing your name and, and and Joe's name but what kind of team you have overall? Handling with all the cap and, and and transactions and everything, so it it cannot be just you and Joe. No, so what what, what 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 kind of you don't have to go to each people, but what kind of tasks there are in, in your team? Because yeah. everybody's always talking about the general manager and maybe the assistant, but who are the people background yeah. working together with you well, and Joe? I, yeah, I, I I think let's start with on the ice, yeah. right? Like our our coaches have mm-hmm. done. An incredible job, you know, Jared Bednar and and, and Ray Bennett and, and UC, uh, mm-hmm. our goalie coach and Nolan Pratt and Brett and they've done an incredible job. And but I also think it's important that our our AHL minor league coaches, um, you know, develop some young players that that end up helping us and and push the needle along. Ryan Graves a few years ago was a guy I think they did a fantastic job with. In getting him to the NHL, and you know they helped Alex Newhook last year early in the season to improve on things. But I think you got scouts. We have a we have a growing mm-hmm. analytics department. Yeah. Um, you know, so we use all those avenues, tap into all those resources, really in an effort to help us make better decisions, whether it's on a waiver claim, a free agent signing, a trade, mm-hmm. a draft pick. Uh, whatever it may be, we have all these people with in, in this incredible wealth of knowledge that you know we have to tap into, and I think that's something that uh, certainly Joe and, and myself, you know, firmly believe in. Yeah, and you were saying about analytics, and it's it's getting bigger and bigger role in NHL, and I have heard at least that same thing in your team. Every after every game, you get the report. Which says what, but what, what was the expected goals for abs yeah. and opponent and everything? A lot of information, so it's getting more and more and bigger and bigger in in the NHL. So, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you have a big team in that segment as well. Yeah, we we have three or four uh, staff members that do do a great job, and and you you highlighted one of their big areas is that sort of supplementing information on upcoming opponents. Yeah. And then, you know, before the game, right, they'll do something on Columbus for these two games, analyzing their strengths of their team and um, things that our, our coaches will then, you know, use as part of the game plan with the players. And yeah. and then after each game, they'll do a, a, an, an analysis of of the game itself and, and some of our uh, benchmarks that the coaches like. Uh, um, 
you know, and they'll do special projects during the year, whether it's helping build a draft list for the yeah. for the amateur draft or, yeah. you know, we're talking trade with someone and we've got three guys and we've got, we want to, you know, we want to do a deep dive on, on certain skills that we feel we might need more than others. We can do a report on that. So they, they do a, they do a lot of work behind the scenes and I, and I think we're fortunate to have them. Yeah, it's a big change. What has yes. happened in that segment in past 10 years? No one talk about it, or maybe someone, but not that much at least in, in 10 years ago. So yeah, it's exploded. it's a good experience how much hockey is like developing and 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 getting better all the time and 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 changing all the time. You you need to know the latest things and all that. Correct. Uh, yeah, seeing yes. the bigger picture once again. Correct. I will. I would hate myself if I forgot forgot to ask from you. Uh, I love the job what you're doing. All the player contract negotiation and yeah, transactions, yeah. the draft, the free agency, the trade deadline, working with different kind of people and person and everything. So I have to ask if someone like me or someone else living far away in here in Europe, what is maybe their chance to get get to work in, in your team or NHL or AHL or what what is the what is yeah. the path? Because it we are so far away from here. It's I I, I listen to the 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 daily phase of yeah. podcast where you visited and, and you you mentioned that there's no one way. It's 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 you cannot say that do this and this. Right. But would be interesting to know that because we are living so far away in Europe that what would be the path? Everybody yeah. can send you an email and letter, yeah. but but it's still it's, it's hard. I'm not you know it's it's yeah. a, it's challenging. I'm not even sure. You know, for me, it didn't happen overnight. You yeah. know, by the time, you know, from when I started and yeah. at sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, where I'm like, how do I do this? Like, I you don't go to accounting school and take yeah. a test, and yeah, it didn't. That's it, it, yeah, it, 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 it. So if in that way, it, it's it's hard. But I, I, for me, I was gonna, I was gonna take a thousand. In my own mind, I had a, my own phrase. I was gonna get a thousand no's. Before. But I just wanted one yes. yes. That's true. And and for me it was in in talking to those gentlemen, they they they, they provided hope. Yeah. That uh, you know, a, a non professional player who had passion and was determined to find a way, um, with with help, a lot of help along the way and a lot of mentoring, um, could do it. And and that's what they provided. And then it was those those baby steps, I think, was yeah. getting the job with the NHL and then meeting more people, right? And then going, making the decision to go to law school. I'm not sure that's the way to Only do it way. for yeah. everyone. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a big investment. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was it was right. it was key. It was the right decision, and and it certainly helped me. Yeah, I heard that you got that advice actually to go to the law school. That was. In the 90s, someone told you, I don't remember now yeah. who it was, but yeah. someone told you that go to law school, that's the yeah. that's first step on the on the path. Yeah, it was all those people. It was the, the Larry Plows that I talked to and um, Brian Burke at the league office. Was, yeah. You know, he he had, a, he was, a, you know, he played minor pro and and was a good college player. And, 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 and Brian was kind enough to give me a few minutes here and there, you know, when I would knock on his door at the league office and Larry Plo was like, you should, you know, certainly if you, you want to think about this, there's going to be more and more, uh, people with that background, mm -hmm. um, that are going to enter these types of jobs. And, yeah. and I think I was like, well, if that's what it takes, then because I didn't really, I didn't want to be, a uh, an attorney. Is that, mm -hmm. is that how yeah, you say yeah, it? In, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In, the, um, Per se, yeah. but if if I had to, I guess there's worse ways to, to make a living. If, yeah, yeah. You know, if you you know you fall short, but I wanted to take the swing. Yeah. And try, and that was one of the ways where I thought, all right, well, if I can do this, then maybe I can add value. And um, of the thousand resumes like that, then maybe mine would come closer to here. Yeah. That's maybe this. This yeah. is a guy we should talk to because I would put my scouting reports yeah. in in there and and got, got very fortunate. But yeah. you know my path was not 
this, it was yeah. a lot of bends in the river. Yeah, so there's no any certain things that if someone there behind the behind the camera is thinking that okay, how can I get there? There's no certain path or certain think... thing. It's just you have to have something to correct to yeah. be different against the, all the others who I are sending so. you emails and yep Yar- yarmo i mean yarmo's now at you know i think he's the first european yeah. train general manager and i you know he made you know in my conversations with him yarmo was a was a great scout a hard working scout yeah. but you know he's got advanced degrees yeah he made a decision you know probably not very common at the time to come over and play yeah, college yeah. hockey, right? You know, so he was, he was always, you know, in my again t- brief time working with him, you know, how he found his, and he was a good player. Obviously, he played yeah. in the NHL, um, you know, but for him to accomplish what he's accomplished has been really impressive too. And and, yeah. and he's worked at it and uh, found a way to to do that. And so I I think you're seeing more and more of that with. Like the introduction of analytics has exploded. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for, again, whether you you played at a high level or not, that if you have a good, yeah. if you have a you know a good understanding of analytics and and you can connect ideas and, and add value to a hockey department and you and you love the game, yeah, uh, I think there's so many there's yeah. so many ways to, to possibly try and yeah. and set yourself apart. Yeah, that's the, maybe the main thing, the added value. You need to add something. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's important, yeah. Let's go. But it can be done. Yeah, it can be done. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the drafts. If there's younger generation looking for this interview, I'm sure that they are interested to know what kind of things the NHL teams are looking at the moment for the younger pe- people. Not just the skills on the ice, but also the off the ice. Is there yeah. any certain things that... They're, you are really focusing at the moment so that the younger people, it's good to know and, and maybe focus on those few topics. Is there any certain things? Yeah, I think, you know, our, our scouts are, are obviously assessing every time they file a report on a player, the, the obvious, right? His yeah. his skating ability, his his work ethic on the ice, his, you know, does he have a big shot? Is he, a, you know, probably the bigger, the bigger challenges is he have hockey IQ, hockey, yeah. hockey smarts, yeah. offensively, defensively. Um, and I think those are, those are, those are key, but I, I, I do think there's a big off ice component yeah. in terms of whatever terminology you want to use, whether it's mm. DNA, yeah. heart, mm. uh, passion for the game, yeah. you know, and how does that show up? And it shows up maybe in, how he takes care of himself. Is he yeah. physically in shape? Is he a gym rat? Yeah. Is he a good yeah. person? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that tells the full story of the player. There's probably lots of good players that are short in those areas. And yeah. then maybe there's some maybe not as good players, but they're really high in those areas. And then yeah. how you kind of piece those things together. But I, I think certainly from our end is a big part of, you know, for I, I know for Joe and for Bedsy, uh, Coach Bednar, myself, and how we put our team together. The uh, we obviously have a lot of skilled hockey mm, players. Yeah, but I, for sure. But I'm really proud, and I and I, I know Joe is proud and Bedsy of of the people that are that are in our room, and and no decision was ever made strictly on just the player. Yeah. Right. You know whether it's. Last year's trade deadline, we had a very, you know, we had a good team. Yeah, really good. And we added three or four pieces. And yeah. you want to be careful, right, yeah. of to not... Not to shake the room too much. Yeah, yeah. and make the sauce maybe not yeah. taste, di- you know, taste too different. And so that was something that we talked a lot about, ex- you know, when we were talking about Josh Manson and Lecky. Cogliano yeah. and, and Lekkanen and um, Nico Sturm. And, yeah. and they were all... You know, we knew them as players. I think that was the probably the easier part, but it's doing the background on on the person. And yeah. and fortunately for us, it was home runs on yeah. on each of them as people. Yeah, of course you you lose the good prospects on Hellison and, and yeah. Baron, but you have to give something to get something. Yeah. And, and I totally understand that. Yeah. Coming coming back to the maybe the draft also is that 
there's a lot of discussion in Finland that when it's when it's the good time for players to move on and 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 go across the across the sea and and come to the USA and try to get the spot on NHL or AHL. What do you think? Of course, each players are different, but it's a lot of discussion. Should you stay here in Finland, play play, uh, play the men's league and in the higher role, few extra years, yeah. gain a little bit size and 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 knowledge, and getting ready, not just the physical but mentally yeah. as well. So it's hard to say to someone that okay, are you ready in 18 or 19 or 20? It's, people are so different, but there's a lot of discussion. Should yeah. you stay a little bit longer in the national yeah. and, uh, and not national, but in the in the league in Finland or I, I, go go young areas to learn the culture and everything in in USA? So do you have any I think opinion it's, here? I think it's I think it's individual. Yeah. Right, and I think selfishly, from from my end, and and I think our team's end, if if we draft a, a young player, whether he's from Sweden or Finland or Germany or where Russia, wherever, and he has a good development situation and he's getting good ice time, then that there's some really good leagues over here. Finland, mm-hmm. Finland being one of them for sure. Sweden being one of them. I think. From our team's end, though, since our development team is basically 50 miles yeah. away, I don't know what that is in kilometers, but it's yeah. close. Yeah, it's close. Yeah. Um, to be able to have our coaches, mm-hmm. our strength people, yeah. our uh, nutrition stuff, our development staff have their hands on them mm-hmm. um, early enough. Yeah, early enough is has has a lot of value, but ultimately, you know. You know from your experience, and I know from mine. Like, there are some kids at 19 that are very mature, yeah, and are ready to come over yeah. and make that jump on and off the ice, yeah. And then there are some that it probably makes sense yeah. to give it another year, yeah. and not just not just um, you know European players. I I would say Matt Calvert was a player that we had um, in Colorado. I had him in Columbus, mm, Columbus and. Yeah. And he had a it, it's similar but different. He had the decision to make to go back to junior for one more year and play as an what they call an overage, yeah, as a twenty year old, or he could turn pro, yeah, and start playing in the minors. And that was something that Matt felt he was on the smaller side. He was always what we call a late bloomer, hmm. um, and he felt, and it doesn't happen very often, but he t- pushed back his contract mm-hmm. a year because he felt he needed that extra year yeah. to physically mature so i think the the player has to know and be honest about where he is in in those areas you know does he have some growing up to do yeah um because it's a big it is it's uh, i i couldn't imagine at 18 picking myself up and going to russia yeah. or finland or To play some hockey, to yeah. play hockey, you know yeah. anything. I, I I didn't, I wasn't good enough, so I didn't, yeah, I yeah. didn't have to worry about it. But, um, you know, for these young young athletes to do that in pursuit of their dream to play in the NHL is, it's a it's a massive massive decision. But I think the good news is there's often enough. It's usually there is no wrong decision. Yeah, it's just which one yeah. is the best. At the time, the decision has to be made. Yeah. Now we don't like when a player stays over here, and the situation is the coaches play the older guys. Yeah, and the younger guys. And the younger guy yeah. is getting six minutes yeah, instead of develop you at all. 16 yeah. minutes. You yeah. know where we where he would be with us. Yeah. Then we have a phone call. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, sometimes those decisions get made, and then once yeah. it's made, it's made. made. So, yeah. That's true. But it's all it we try to come at it as what is best what will be the best development plan for this player yeah. and it might be different yeah yeah and not everyone can be cape landscope and be no. really mature in 18 and ready to right. be 19 a captain so yeah that's yeah, really you, rare. you cannot compare but right. wh- how do you see in the future and where the game is going in the maybe next five or ten years do you see some certain area is there something some area in hockey that Game is changing. Everybody's talking; it's getting faster and faster. But yeah, there has to be some other things also. Yeah, it is always getting faster and faster. And the the, the kids today are so skilled um, at at young ages. You marvel at what they can do. I, yeah. 
I think we're going to continue to see some, you know, different ways of, of how we, I would say off the ice, how we, mm-hmm. how we do things and in, in terms of uh, whether it's improved nutritional stuff, strength and conditioning. Yeah. I think off, you know, for us off the ice, I think our analytics area is, is just really starting. Yeah. You know, I think we're going to see some big, from big impacts in, in those areas uh, as well. I think goaltending is another area, how we evaluate yeah. uh, goaltenders at both the amateur and pro level is yeah. still an area that's that's going to be have some, I think, interesting uh, ways here in, in the near future. So I think those are a few. Yeah. Current agreement between players and the teams is until 25 and 26 season. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Do you see a big chance of lockout after that, or what is your feeling? I hope not. I yeah. mean, I, we've I've been fortunate enough to, you know, be working in the NHL for, you know, the last 23 years or 22 years, whatever it is, and and we've you know we've had our the one full year, and then we had another partial year, and it's painful, right? It's yeah. it's it's tough for everyone involved, the teams, the players, the you know obviously the owners. The, our fans so mm. you know hopefully you know it's it's not as far away as mm. as you think so a few years yeah, yeah so hopefully you know we get through you know the pandemic and we're just yeah. now you know the we're it's a great sport a great product and hopefully now we can get momentum back and yeah. and continue growing the game everywhere and then you know the that you don't even like thinking about that uh, yeah. that scenario so hopefully the yeah. We'll see. The, the people will be able to uh, get something done and yeah. and keep our game keep yeah, our going. game and going. Yeah. And what 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 are your what is your opinion on World Cup? Because as a fan, like last World oh, Cup, yeah. it was so crazy hockey. Like the Canada youth team, that lineup, like there was Mac David, there's a Mac Hinnon, there was a Matthews, there were like yeah. all star teams. So yeah. What do you think about World Cup? They are talking I, about maybe 2024. Yeah, so. that would be incredible. You know, when they do that, I, I think, I don't know if there's a way to to maybe do it in August before training camp. I and I don't know how I feel, you know, in, in February, you know, doing something like that. It's so close to playoffs and, yeah. and trade deadline. Yeah. And the last thing you want is somebody yeah, get, to get, get, get yeah. dinged up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of that but i i think anytime you can have a, a best on best um player tournament you know whatever the sport that that's that's going to drive uh fan interest and i i think that uh tournament was incredible you know for me going back what what drove me to hockey was you know i loved all the sports as a kid and um but that 1980 olympic gold yeah. win for the US. USA yeah 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 was uh before my time but even though I even I know about before it before so. your time yeah, yeah everybody knows about the yeah. gold and yeah. the, the game and the movies were made but yeah you know we had to beat Finland to, yeah yeah to seal Final the game seal. Yeah. yeah 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 so um but that that tournament for me was it was riveting it was it it that was when I was like whoa this yeah. is incredible And and then obviously you have the NHL with with the best players doing their thing and, and best league in the world. So yeah, um, I, to answer your question, I I think any any time if, if if they can put their minds together to have a best on the best type thing, it's only good for the business it, and the NHL. Yeah, the fans. It's, and, yeah. It, it's always worth discussing. That's for sure. Yeah. I ask about getting work in, in NHL as a as a me or someone else in the in the office. We went through the draft, and now now based on the World Cup question, one question could be that in Finland, a lot of people are talking about Jukka Jalonen, the Finnish head coach. The national team has a great success in different leagues in in Europe, also in a national level level of winning in the the is the world not the World Cup, but every year is the tournament. I don't know what is the Yeah. Correct word, but he's a lot of success in Europe. We don't need to dive on in in Yucca, but for for Finnish coaches overall, because there are a lot of Finnish coaches here and interesting about hockey and, and NHL. What do you think is the path for them to get in the NHL head oh, coach in in some yeah, point? Is well, it is it 
it's, it's man- mandatory to go to AHL and learn yeah. to learn the culture and system and then dig no. your way up or or what I, do you think because I think it's very similar to the players I think there's no sort of one path I think it's going to happen yeah, at some at, point at some point European coaches have to be there yeah yeah they're, they're they have there's so many good coaches over here yeah um and whether it's you know in Finland or Sweden or, yeah. or wherever over here in Europe and I I think you're going to see all of those options you're going to see a, a gentleman go over or, or a female mm-hmm. and go over as a an AHL coach mm-hmm. and then the team is going to be like whoa yeah. this person is really good and or you're going to have a more maybe a more established person that comes and goes right to an AHL head job or an NHL assistant yeah but, and you know and the, the time is the time is coming i think um, the teams know Uh, who these who these guys are they know who's having success and yeah. and who isn't and i think there's a lot of brilliant minds in in throughout the hockey world that it's it, it's just a matter of time yeah that's good lead way to another question about Jussi. Jussi was the first finnish goalie coach ever in nhl he came after the season which was, which was disaster for you you were dead last on the on the understanding yeah So I would imagine it would be easier to hire some veteran ex goalie to get in 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 your organization. So any any uh, any thoughts or can you remember remember well the interview with Jussi and how that yeah. went? Because it was a big difference choosing a European goalie coach. So how that went and and how went the decision between Jared and you and Joe and everything? So yeah, but it's hard to make a decision to. Let's take a European I, goalie coach. I I think it was I, I think it was easy yeah. for when when you talk to UC he's he's very obviously he's very passionate about the goaltending position and and when you get him you know talking about goaltending you know he he has a very distinct way of describing yeah. the position and his teaching methods and and things of that sort but. The goalies that have worked with with UC um, all speak very highly of them, mm-hmm. and they've all seemed to have, you know, nothing but good things to say. We had to uh, obviously had someone on our team that uh, in Varley at the yeah, time, exactly. Semyon Varlamov, that that spoke very highly of of, of UC, and and the more we um, found out about him. Uh, the more the more we liked his mm-hmm. teaching methods and um, but I think the thing for me what it was is his he has an, a really nice ability to connect with the goalies mm-hmm. and I and not just the starter right like I you I've watched you know we've watched juice live and in color the last few years and he's obviously he has to coach all the goalies mm-hmm. right not yeah. just not just the start the mm-hmm. Air, you know the quote-unquote starter yeah but whether it was philip grubauer or jonathan bernier was in the or time yeah. pablo Fransos, like yeah. juicy wants to see them all be the best that they can be and i think that is really really crucial and really impressive that he can give little bits of things to he doesn't change the goalie but he gives little bits to each one and and what i love about him juice and is he's so invested in their mm. success and uh, you know i and i think he gets pretty close to them which i i'm guessing is natural for for that position they're so so important to the outcome of every game it is it is it's everything yeah. so but i think his Um, the fact that we had somebody on our team that was mm-hmm. say you have to talk to this person yeah. here's why and then you and then you do then you then you see why they they like them so much and he's been a great add to our staff and become a very good friend yeah and it was a big decision like like i said being dead last and making something totally different and hiring people yeah. from europe so it was totally new thing but Few words about your current Avalanche team. Is there any certain thing that you are seeing at the moment that you might need in the future? Everybody's yeah. talking about the 2C and yeah. I, I hate it. I hate it in the summer. Everybody was telling that trade Girard and get the 2C and I was like, why? 
Yeah. They have the best defense man group, six guys in in the whole league. Everybody's trying to get those demons. You cannot find anywhere. Yeah. It's so expensive to trade for the demon. Yeah. You only get from draft. So why why to trade Girard to get two sheep if you have the yeah. best D group? And it's always the thing when you go to spring and the playoffs. Everybody needs like eight to ten demons because there will be injuries and everything. So yeah. why get rid of the D group well, which is so good? So is is there something you are looking at the moment? Is it two C still, or or is there depth, or we we get? Are you are you giving time to the guys? Yeah, I think that's right. I think we you know listen, we lost uh, Kadri. Yeah, there's no there's no getting around no. it. He was a, a a big part of our team's success, yeah. a really good hockey player, and and had a fantastic year last year. But with with the salary cap, unfortunately, you know, mm-hmm. tough decisions have to be yeah. part of the part of the equation and, and and it will continue to be part of the equation as we move along but um we get the we get the you know the the fans and the and the and the media on the on the 2C but yeah it's an opportunity for somebody to grab it and whether that's you know Alex Newhook over you know he's not going to you know do it and earn the trust of a 2C as on a Stanley Cup winning you yeah. know team from yeah. last year in 10 games. Yeah. It's going to take some time to to assess that and and maybe maybe he it will grab it and maybe he's just not quite ready. His his play will tell us that if he is or isn't. Um, and all players come at a at a different speed as you know. So yeah. what we do know is that Alex is an NHL player and and yeah. is a good one now. Yeah. Can he be a, 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 is he ready for that responsibility? Time will tell. You know, he played for us last year, and but was a you know a middle six guy. He was on the yeah. second line, third line. But you know, with it, Rodriguez, who we brought in, yeah. and we know Comfort can be a really good three. Yeah. Maybe that, Myers that can you know. move in. Myers is you know he needs some you know development time, but yeah. um, it's something that we'll have to assess. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a fair. You look at our lineup. I think it's a fair. It's it's easy, right? Yeah, easy to see that. Okay, that's right. the whole. Where's Katri now? Right. But but in, in the, I think that it's, you have to take those risks with with Newhook and others. Like when Chicago has the dynasty, you cannot have only people earning like five to seven millions no. a year. You need those ELC players so. to get in. So so you have to take a risk and see. You you have drafted like Newhook first first yeah. round. You have high hopes. You have developed him. Yep. It would be silly not to try with him and see what you got. Give some time and totally. 20, 30 games and let's see how it goes. If he's not ready, then let's no, try with something else. But you're you right. have to try. You need those ALC contracts for the, sure for you. In the cap world, yeah. Yeah. those are those are really important. You know, last year we had, you know, Bo was a, a Bo Byron was yeah. a contributing player on the on the ELC. Alex yeah. Newhook was a contributing player, you know. Yeah. To your point on on the back end, you know. You lose Gerard, mm-hmm. you know, in the second round or yeah. in St. Yeah. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis, yeah. You know, and, and, and Bo elevates and Josh Manson, yeah. you know, we traded for Josh. So you, yeah. you're right. You need those, you need those defensemen, yeah. you know, come playoff time. So you can't, you know, we, we sort of half joke with UC about goaltending, right, and every night, but. The back end is is a yeah. really important piece, and it's a, a really big part of our team. Yeah, and I I, th- I think Bo will be great in the in, in the future for the team. Everybody's talking about Makar and Taves as as they shoot. They are maybe both our top ten yep. in the league. But I think Bo Byron will be the next big thing for you you guys, yeah. and and it will be interesting to see next summer what kind of contract he will get. But he he's a great piece at least for the future. Yeah. And you 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 benefit a lot of him in this year with the with the ELC contract still going on. I agree with you. I think they're that's our. I think that's the engine of our team. You know, yeah. we ha- we have incredible skill throughout our lineup. You know, it, nobody needs to. You know, everyone who watches us play can see the power and speed of McKinnon and, yeah. and Miko's size and, yeah. and hands for a big man and Lecky's work and. Landy does everything for us in the hard areas of the ice yeah. and, and, and scores. So I think, you know, our skill up front is is there. Um, you know, but that back end, you know, when you can throw with Taves, McCarr, Gerard, Byram, yeah. you know, Eric Johnson and yeah. Manson, yeah. you know, that's 
that's that's key for us. And listen, does it mean at some point we're not gonna, we're going to have to make a, a hard decision? For sure, we, for sure. We, we know pre- tapes is coming, yeah. and Miko yes. later on. You never know. You never know, and that's, you don't know what the cap costs. You don't know. That's Will it thing. raise one million this year or four? Like yeah. Pet, uh, Pet, Petman was we saying, yeah. you know, is it ten years? We hope. You know, you love to keep them all, right? Yeah. They're you 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 especially you know the, you won with them. We would have loved to have had you know Nas back, For but sure. it just yeah. financially it impossible, it, impossible, yeah. and and you know it t- or tough. Uh, but for him, that was a, a great contract and one that he earned from Calgary, and he'll be yeah. a really big piece there. For so sure. now we need the next the next guy has to yeah. seize the yeah. opportunity and and but and, ca- and grow with us. Catry is also a good example. Where we what we were talking about earlier that. You never know when when player is ready. Katri haven't played that well during his career. He's really good NHL player with Toronto and you your team. Yeah. But but now he's like an elite player last year and, and and starting this year. So it took him like ten years to get that level. He wasn't that level in twenty one or twenty two. He was a great player, but getting that top level, you never know how long it will take with yeah. certain guys. But, well, that's fair. He was. Uh... He was a big piece of what we did last year, and and um, and a huge, huge guy in the playoffs, and and uh, yeah, it was a you know a key move that that we you know we had Kale right to your point. Yeah. We had this young guy, yeah, in Kale who's an offensive guy, yeah, power play skill set that allowed us to to think about moving Tyson Berry and. Yeah, and Alex Kerfoot at the time, two very good hockey players. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah, and we get what we thought was the perfect number two center for us yeah. to slide in behind Nathan on the perfect contract. Yeah, and in the end, it was right decision. Yeah. I have two last questions. Uh, we can go later on if we can do this again, maybe in the future, hopefully, and we can then dive dive more to Miko and Lecky and, and also Justus. It would be interesting to see. He's Pat coming to the league, but uh, last two questions. First one, what did you do with Stanley Cup this summer? What was your day? Our day, uh, we had a day in Denver um, in our at our home and took it around to local rinks and the, uh, some of the local areas by where we live, the Parker Police Department, um, the family sports where you mm. probably have visited yeah. And, yeah. and did something with the youth hockey teams there. Nice. And then we had a small gathering at our house in the afternoon and then uh, rented out uh, a small little restaurant at night for family and friends. And, and I was fortunate enough uh, to get a second day in New York where I grew okay. up. Uh, nice. for a few hours when yeah. it w- was convenient during training camp the cup was going to be in mm-hmm. in New York and and they were kind enough to um, allow me to have it for a few more hours so where I grew up I could take it to my school and um, family and friends that weren't able to travel to to Colorado could could share in it and I think that um as I'm sure you would, you know, experienced and you yeah. see it's yeah. uh, it's a special trophy yeah. and and to see the joy on people's faces around that thing, it's a rock star. Yeah. It just is. It's yeah. uh, it's incredible to see. I think that was um, from everything that happened, but it just seemed like one thing was better than the other, right? But yeah. all 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 earned by our guys and very thankful that they were able to get it done and and um, yeah two incredible days yeah last question during your road trips or trips like this if you had to ch- share the room hotel room with someone in the organization ah. who that would be Oof, that's a good question I would probably have there's so there's no bad choice here yeah there's no bad choice, really. We have a we have a good group of guys that we you know we all we all get along. We all you know we go to dinner together on the road a lot whenever we can. We we enjoy being around you know having each other's company. But I I might say Betsy. Betsy. Yeah, yeah. I might yeah. say Betsy. Yeah. yeah. Safe pick. Yeah, the Safe head coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if we ran into some trouble, Betsy could probably. I get us out of it better than better than any of them. But Joe would be. 
Joe's Joe, right? But with Joe, you got to be prepared. You got to you got to be stopped if you're <laughs> yeah. trying to get every to your corner, hotel yeah. every corner, right? So yeah, uh, because of that. But uh, yeah, that's a good question. No, Let, let's see what you should see, think we'll about see. your yeah. upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. It's it's an honor to have your time. I know you're busy, and there would be a lots of people who would like to talk with you and and have have you in their show. So once again, coming start of the start of this this episode i told you I told about you how friendly you are and open arms for everybody so giving time for me and this this program it's it means everything for me so big thank you thanks for for being the first guest of the show so hopefully we can do it later well, on in the future again well that was great to eat i know tiota no i didn't understand try again <laughs> You can say it again. Teet. Teet. Hi, Noah. Here, Noah. Here, Noah. Teet. Teet. Here, Noah. Teet. You are pretty. That was fun. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> thank Thanks you, Chris, for having me on. Thank you, Chris, and, and everybody on the other side. Thank you, and and like I said, thanks for the Chris. Uh, comment on the video what you think about Chris's answers, and if you have any questions for me, share the video so everybody can see it. Keep your head up. There's more to come. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. It was super. That was great.